Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. You know how much I appreciate all of your support. So let's get started on our first Trash to Treasure project. A couple years ago, my husband cut down a tree in our yard because he was going to build a swing set for the grandkids. And I asked him to take the stump and cut it up into several slices. And this is one of the slices that he cut up. Now I've had them sitting out in the garage for a couple years and I actually sealed it um, back when he first cut them in case there were any bugs inside of it. And so it's just been sitting out in the garage until I could decide what I wanted to do with it. So what I'm doing now is I'm using the IOD mold called Hidden Hollow. And it's a really neat mold and it's got three different doors that you might find maybe in like something like a gnome or a fairy garden. And so the one that I chose is the one that's kind of in the shape of an arch and it has like some flowers growing up around the side and it has a window in the top of it that looks like it could be something you would find in a church, like a stained glass window. And then it has like a little mail slot in it. So I really like this one and I liked what it was going to look like at the end. So I'm using DOS air dry clay and I'm pushing it into the mold and then I'm using just an old gift card to scrape it flat. Now, one thing I like about the IOD molds is that they have the micro rim around the edges. So it makes for a cleaner edge when you're putting it on. Now, I'm using another mold that's called Toadstool. And it's this beautiful mold and it has all of these different shaped mushrooms in it. And I choose three that are the little rounded off ones. The next mold that I'm using is from the Dewdrop Pond, and I use three of the frond, the fern fronds. I use one of the little lizards. I use a, one of the frogs. I use a ladybug, and I think I use what would be called like the little slug, and I just put them in different places. Now, I want to mention that sometimes with like the little lizard, you have to be really careful with the feet because they're so tiny. And so um, if you've got something that you're using air dry clay on and it's a really skinny little piece, one of the things you can do is to put it up in the freezer and it sets it up to where it gets just a little bit crusty after about 15 minutes and it keeps those little pieces from breaking most of the time. Now I have decided where I'm gonna place all of the different pieces on that tree stump and I'm putting them all down with tight bond glue. So let me tell you about the colors that I chose. I chose the crimson to paint the top of the mushrooms, but French linen to paint the base of it. The fern fronds, I used Dixie Belle kudzu. And with the frog, I actually used a couple colors. I used collard greens and stormy seas. And I used um, some folk art colors that were more kind of an apricot color on the flowers on the door. And on the door, I also used Truffle by Waverly. And then I also later on found like an old, um, it's like a cake fondant mold that looks like brick that I put up underneath the door. So I used a lot of different colors on it. And then once I got everything dry, then I used some Waverly antique wax and brushed that over it to kind of give it more of a muted effect. And then I also used the antique wax actually on the tree stump so it would all be dark. And then I went back over it with white wax. Now that's a lot of work for this little scenery, but here's how it ends up. Tell me what you think. Oh, and I also put some butterflies on it. Now I'm participating in a Trash to Treasure DIY co-hosted by Rustic and Lace DIY and co-hosted by Six Kids and a Glue Gun and Crafty Hints. So make sure you go out and watch all of those amazing creators. My next project is the top 
of a pretzel and peanut butter lid. Um, my husband eats a lot of those, and this is just an old plastic lid that I thought looked like something I might could use later on. So I painted it all white, and then these are some of those little little knobs that are flat on one end that I'm using as feet. And I'm gonna actually make a riser out of it, and then I'm gonna be adding something to make it look like it has a cloche on as well. But it is the lid off of a plastic container. Um, and so that truly is trash to treasure. So I'm painting it all white and I'm painting it on the top, on the sides and on the bottom and I'm painting the legs. Now, later on, I will add a mold, trimming mold from IOD to go around the edges of that lid to kind of fancy it up a little bit. But it's something really small and I have a vendor booth where I sell a lot of my crafts but because this is just basically a plastic lid, this will actually just be something that I keep at home. But I like to have little risers around the house to put different things on. And even though it's just a plastic lid, it's very sturdy, especially when you add those wood legs to it. So tell me something, do you like to use risers around your home? And if so, what sort of things do you like to put on them? Do you like to put little figurines or, or what all do you like to do? Now on this, I'm using Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the color Tobacco Road. And I thought because it was just a little plain, instead of just keeping it all white, I would add just a little bit of like antiquing to make it kind of those details to kind of stand out. And I couldn't decide whether to put the gel stain on the legs or not because it's so short, you can't really see them. So for right now, I basically was just putting it on on the top. And I started by putting it on really light, but I ended up getting a brush and brushing it on so I could add just a little bit more to it because the, the mold that goes around the edge has got a lot of pretty detail in it. And I wanted that to show up. But I just thought it was neat that instead of tossing this plastic lid into the recycle bin, that I can actually make something out of it. And this was actually kind of a really fun project to make. Um, it, it's not something that I would normally make, but because of this playlist, um, it just turned out to be kind of one of my favorite things in this, this video today. So tell me what you think. Do you use risers? And do you like use a recycle bin at your house? Um, I know that my mom, she doesn't create enough, like, waste at her house because she lives alone. So she doesn't use her recycling bin very much at all. In fact, when they come, um, I think they come every two weeks. They don't even have to empty it every two weeks um, because she doesn't need to recycle that much. But I just go over all of it with the Voodoo Gel Stain. Now, the little glass part is just a little vase that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm adding one of those little knobs to it. I painted it. So it's going to make it look like um, it's the, the cloche that would sit on the riser. And I'm using tight bond glue to put it on. And it's just something that makes it just a little extra pretty. And then to display it, I just tie like a little piece of lace around it to just add a little bit of extra to it. You could also put a transfer on it, especially if you want to use it at Christmas time. Um, and you could put a Christmas transfer on it and put like a little Christmas tree inside of it. But this is what it looks like. It's kind of cute. It's just a small, but I really like it. So if you're enjoying the video, make sure to um, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, my next project is a just a piece of wood. Um, my daughter and her husband built a house last year, and a lot of the wood that the contractors were using, the scraps, they just threw it in a big pile. Well, I'm not going to let good wood go to waste, so I went digging through that pile, and he let me have as much as I wanted. And this is just a thin piece of wood, and I love risers. So um, all I did was I you know, cleaned it up and I use a miter saw to make sure that it was even. And these are just those little flat beads 
um, they're flat on one side and I just went all the way around the edge with those little flat beads. And um, the reason I have something on either side of that piece of wood is to hold it upright while I'm gluing them on. And then I just go all the way around the edge and I put little feet on it. And now it's not the best piece of wood. It's got some knots on it. Um, and I'm sure that's part of the reason that they tossed it to the side. But what I do is I go ahead and seal it first on the top, just so that none of those tannins will bleed through. And then I put about three coats of Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint on it because I wanna make sure that it's really good and white um, and that you can't see any of those dark spots at all. And then I just very gingerly go around and paint the beads and the top and the bottom and the legs. I just paint the whole thing white. Now it's really short and it's not something that you would have something high sitting on it. Then what I did was I took a stamp from the redesign with Prima and it's called I See Paris. Now I placed my stamp on a thin mount and actually this stamp, it doesn't stick real good. So I've used some double-sided tape to make sure it stays on there. And I'm stamping it with stays on ink. And it's a really pretty stamp. And it's a garland that goes around and it has a B on the inside and the script writing underneath it says B's and Queens. So I go ahead and stamp all the way around and make sure that I've got a lot of ink on it. But then what I like to do is I like to take a baby wipe and go all the way around the edges so that if there's any extra ink on the side, then it won't transfer when I lay it down. So when you're ready, hover over the area that you're gonna stamp just to know if you're gonna be happy where it is and then just lay it down. And what I'm doing is I'm holding it with one hand and I'm just walking around it with my fingers, making sure that it doesn't move at all. And I just take my time and make sure I'm pressing down on all the edges. And then when you or feel like you've got it all transferred, you're gonna pick it straight up so that it won't muddy any of the design. And I decide not to put any antiquing gel on this. Now, see how it's really short and, and I've just got it laid up on the side. Now, my last project is also Trash to Treasure. It's a cardboard box. Um, my husband got something in the mail recently and um, I don't ever throw cardboard boxes away because you can use them for so many things. And so um, I just folded the flaps on the inside. And this is a flexible, foamy um, trim that I've had for a long time. I used it for something else years ago. And I put it on. It's, it's, it sticks by itself, which is nice. I didn't have to glue it down. And now I went to Dollar Tree and I got that white nautical rope. I actually didn't know how much I was going to need, um, but I was in another city recently or another little town, um, and I bought about 10 packs of it because I can't find it at my local Dollar Tree. And all I'm doing is I'm just going around it just very slowly, and I'm using a low temperature glue gun to put it down. And each time that I come to the end of one of the pieces of rope, the next piece of rope, I try to butt it up to it really close so that you won't see a gap on it. Now, when you buy that nautical rope, the ends of it have tape on it so that it won't fray. And so one of the things that I do after it's all done is I just very easy try to cut that tape off. And then I go back with some clear glue because when you cut that tape off, it's going to ravel just a little bit, but I don't like the the way that that tape looks. So I'll try to cut it off the best I can and then I'll go back with clear glue and then just put some of that on the edges to clean up that raveling part. And I just work my way all the way around to the bottom. Now, one of the things I thought about was I thought about dry brushing over the detail of that trim, 
but um, it's Debbie's DIY paint, which is water soluble. And so um, I was afraid that if I added some dry brush to it, it might kind of um, mess up with the integrity of that black. So I checked with my mom and she said to just keep it black because looking at it, you can still see the detail on it a lot. And then once you get to the end, you just kind of wiggle that rope around and keep going. Now, this is just an old piece of drop cloth that I just kind of laid in and kind of played with it to see what it was going to look like. And I'm just folding it in, especially on the edges, kind of like you would a gift when you're wrapping it. And then I'm just using a low temperature um, hot glue gun to tape it down. Because this, again, is not something I'll take to my booth at, my vent at the vendor store. This is something that I'll use at home because the grandkids are always um, bringing books in and we just throw all the books in that box and then we'll, you know, crawl up on the couch and we'll just, you know, read as many books as they want to at one time. And when my granddaughters are here, we lead a, read a lot of fancy Nancy books um, because they really like frou-frou kind of stuff and anything princess. So this will be another box that we put children's books in especially when we go to the library. Now, this is kind of tucked around in a little different spots, but it's okay because it's just something I'm going to be using at home. But one thing I will do is I'm going to spray that black trim to make sure that it doesn't come off at all because um, it, did, it was kind of hard to get it to go well on that foam. And after I would paint it, I would see some little spots that if I just touched it a little bit in some spots, the paint would come off. So I'm gonna make sure to seal that black paint on it before we use it. So this is coming to the end of the video. So I want you to tell me, which Trash to Treasure project did you like the most? And did you like that scenery that I put on that tree stump? And if you would do something like that, what are some little critters that you would think of that would be in a forest or in a little fairy kingdom that they would you might see? What kind of things would you use? So I'm just finishing it up. But I hope that you've enjoyed this video today. It was a lot of fun today. Just kind of thinking outside of the box and thinking of the different things that you normally would toss in the trash can, but that you can use to make beautiful decor for your home. And there's the final product of my cardboard box. What do you think? So I really like the projects today, but make sure that you check out all the creators in the playlist today and see what they come up with. And I hope that all of these videos today inspire you to see what kind of things that you can make for your home that normally you would toss away, but that you can make beautiful treasures for your home. So make sure you leave me a comment and let me know what you think, what was your favorite one. And if you're new to my channel, I hope that you will check out all my other videos that I've done in the past. But guys, thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much.